And this, this, this thing is working too. Can you all hear me with this thing on? Yeah, okay, good. Tell me that. Not long ago, my buddy Jonas started dabbling in real estate in his spare time. A former sushi chef. Now, Jonas is a full-time real estate investor. Sushi chef. Good to see you, Jonas. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Put that on me, man. What do you think, man? Hey, free dish. <laughs> Big money. That, uh, if you guys don't recognize that guy on there, his name is Doug Clark. He used to have a show called Footman, and uh, he's doing a new show, and it's called Big Money. And I have the privilege of being asked to be on the show and uh, just do our real estate thing. So, um, what network? This is on, I, it's either ABC or NBC at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. So uh, check either of those two. It's called Big Money, and it's cool. It gives all kinds of real estate tips and stuff. But that's not. I'm not trying to plug his show. It's just I just want to show you that clip. So thanks. Okay. okay. So uh, Sean Watkins asked me not to get to Anthony Robbins on you, so I'm gonna, I was trying to avoid it. <laughs> But it's just kind of inevitable that I had to bring up this first because really, this this is gonna make or break whether or not you do a deal, in my opinion. Because I've seen a lot of people come and go in the club, and the ones that do the deals, they're in a position where they're they're kind of at rock bottom, or they're they've got something that's really really motivating them to get a deal done. And my, my mentor, one of my mentors, Sean Watkins, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but this guy has dropped some serious weight in the past few months. How many pounds have you lost, Sean? 72. 72. Let me ask you, what was the what was the motivation behind that? That's trying to chase my kids around and getting running out of breath. Yeah. So um, you had an incident, right? Like, yeah. December 3rd, 2010, I had a sudden cardiac arrest sitting in my office, and uh, I died, and 18 minutes later, I was revived by a paramedic after my son gave me CPR for 18 minutes, and I woke up at the Park Center, and they implanted me with a uh, defibrillator device in my chest. And even though they didn't find anything, uh, any reason why it happened, you know, heart disease or anything else, they said, you might think it would be dead if you didn't weigh so much. It's <laughs> easier on everybody. Yeah. So, uh, that was kind of a, all right, well, if you're looking at the time, my wife was six months pregnant with her youngest son, Ryan, and so I almost didn't get to see him more. And so it goes back to what I said, how do you want to spend your time? I'd rather spend my time chasing my kids and catching them rather than having them ask my daddy to get a glass of water to eat and sit down. Yeah, give, giving you CPR. Right. Thank you for sharing that, man. So, for Sean... light that fire under his butt to get the point, but that's kind of, it's a good thing. Sometimes, for me, what my reason was, was I was a sushi chef, and I would get to work at 8.30 in the morning, and I would come home at like 12 at night, and I, was, I wasn't seeing my kids or my wife, and I was getting all these accolades and winning these awards and being in the newspaper and all this stuff, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to be with my kids and my wife. And so today I actually brought my kids and my wife so that you could see the reason why I do what I do. And they're back here. This little guy, he kind of looks like a little me. I don't know. And his name is Pi. And my, where are my daughters? They're at the vending machine. Oh, they're at the vending machine, yes. But anyway, so that that's my reason why. When I talk to people that uh, have a very secure job, you know, they don't really need to do a deal. Those guys, you know, go come for like a year and, hey, have you done a deal yet? No, but I got my job, so I'm good. There's no heart attack. Do you know what I'm saying? You've got to have the heart attack or the, the job that you hate, that you have to get out to get you motivated to do the deal. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I see just from my observation and in talking with people. I've, I've talked to so many people here 
who dropped like $25,000 on some seminar. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, do, do any of you know anybody that's dropped $25,000 on some seminar? And you're like, oh, so how many deals have you done? None. How long have you been doing it? Oh, about a year. So what's going on? Well, I just don't know where to start. Wait, you gave 25 grand to some guy, and you don't know where to start? Hello? You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to tell you how I did it. I didn't drop any money. All I did was I made friends. Okay, So I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. And you can do the same thing. I am a sushi chef, or was a sushi chef. Sushi chef. <laughs> now, it's hard for you to say. Yeah, it's even hard for me to say. Okay, next slide. Okay, so have you ever felt like this at a real estate meeting? I, the first, I went to one of Sean Watkins' seminars. I went to Randall Wall seminar, and all these people, and they start talking. They're like, "Oh yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do an all-inclusive deed of trust, and then you're gonna." You're going to do no money not, and all those payments are going to go directly 100% principal reduction, and then we're going to walk the mortgage, and I'm just like, ah! I'm just like, I think I'm just going to go back to doing sushi. I'm just like so confused right now. And so the mistake that a lot of people make is they feel like in order for me to pull the trigger and get started, I need to be Sean Watkins or Randall Wall. I need, I need to know how to walk the mortgage and do it back. And, you know, understand all this note stripping and all this crazy stuff, which I encourage you to learn. I, I love learning. I go to every seminar, and I encourage you to learn all of these things. But please, please don't feel like you can't get started because you don't know all that stuff. All you need to do is know. Have you guys heard the analogy of the car driving in the night? So. The car driving, if I was to drive from here to Las Vegas, do I need to see the entire road from here to Las Vegas at night? No. All I need to know is the, the next 30 feet in front of me. That's all I need to know. So how do you get to know the next 30 feet? So the guy that dropped the 25 grand on the seminar, he's thinking, wow, man, they dropped this big binder me, and I don't know anything about it, so I can't do any deals. I'm done. I can't do it. No. You need to know the next 30 feet. What? Where do I get a rep C from? Hmm. UtahRealEstate.com. Okay, now, where do I sign on the document when I write an offer? Uh, where do I check the due diligence box? Yes or no? I mean, it's 30 feet. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to know how to walk a mortgage before you do a deal. All you need to do is buy a deal for less than what it costs to resell after your repairs. That's all you need to know. I mean, you can do that. And so, okay, next one. Okay, this is what I did, okay? I, I came to the club and I said, okay, who are the movers and the shakers here? I want to learn from the masters. So I'm like, whoa, Brandon Walt, Sean Watkins, Matt Snape, Matt Atkinson, blah, 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 all these people. I went to every seminar that they gave. And I invited them to a free sushi class, right? <laughs> and I bought them lunch. I mean, I became their friend, okay? Because nothing is more annoying than somebody that just wants to take, take, take from somebody and not give anything. So what I did was I just said, you know what, I'm going to be friends with the best real estate guys, and I'm going to get to know them, give them free sushi classes, buy them lunch, so that I can pick their brain and this is, the, here's the secret, guys. This is, this is it right here. Because if you go to Sean Watkins exclusively and you're just like, hey, uh, how do you fill out a contract? And every time you have a question, he's going to be like, dude, stop calling me. Because, I mean, figure it out on your own. So this is what I did. I have a list of mentors. And what I do is I rotate through them. Okay, so every time I have a question, I have a list of like 10 people that are just crushing it in real estate. So when I have a question, question one, I call Sean Hawkins. The next time, I call Brandon Wall or I email them. Email is the best, by the way, for these guys because they're really busy. And I rotate through. So he might get a question from me once every three to six months. And he's not getting annoyed by me. He's like, hey, I'm cool. You know, you can help me out. Buy me lunch every once in a while. This is the secret. You just have to be nice to people and 
give them something, I mean, not like in a manipulative way, but just be a giver and be nice. And most people, I haven't had any real estate investor that was doing better than me shut me down and say, you know, I can't answer that question for you. Never, not once. Next, next one. Okay, so get, get answered to your questions already going over that. Okay, here's the thing. It's, this is where the rubber meets the road. Sean talks about this all the time. You've got to make the offer. The offer is where the rubber meets the road. If you're not making offers, you're not going to do any deals. Um, so sometimes we find a deal that might be a deal. We're like, oh yeah, my neighbor, he wants to sell, and I think it's a deal. And uh, you know, you say he really wants to sell it, and then, uh, yeah, so I, I got this deal, and we start talking about it, we work it up, and then we do nothing. We don't make the offer because we don't know how to make the offer. Again, that's where it comes back to, you need a mentor who can walk you through these things. Perfect. Next slide. Okay, so this is what I see happen a lot at the clubs. People go to like 10 seminars, they learn 50 different ways to do a deal, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to do all 50 ways of doing a deal. So here's my question. How's that working for you? You're just confusing the crap out of yourself. I guarantee you. So the analogy is this. How many of you play instruments here in this room? Okay, how many of you play multiple instruments? Okay, when you learn to play, did you learn to play one instrument first, or did you learn to play 50 all at the same time? One. You just learn how to play one, right? Because if you try to play the drums, the flute, the clarinet all at one time, you just confuse the crap out of yourself and then you just quit. Or you try to play all of those and what would you have in common with all of those instruments? You would suck at every single one of them. <laughs> There's no difference when you're doing real estate. You have to choose one way, maybe two, and focus on those one or two ways to do a deal and only do that until you master it. Master the violin and then move on to the clarinet. But don't try to do all 50. I tried to do that and I just confused a crap amount by myself and I was like, I think I just want to go back to playing sushi. So don't do that. So, jack of all ways to do a real estate deal, closer of none. You know? Okay, next one. Okay, does anybody uh, know what that is? That's a diamond mine, okay? It's a diamond mine. Okay, next slide. So you have to go through approximately 20, 250 tons of rocks to find one a one carat diamond. So a lot of people will go on and look at a bunch of deals and be like, oh, but five deals, oh, that wasn't a deal. You know what? This stuff doesn't work. You gotta look at a lot of rocks to find the diamond. But every time I find a rock, I'm that much closer to the diamond. See what I'm saying? So let me go through some of the deals I do real quickly. So this is you. You have to get used to digging. You could dig for, what if you dug for four months and you just saw rocks? And then you hit one deal that made you 20 grand. Is that unrealistic to hit one deal that makes you 20 grand? No. So let's say you hit one deal at 20 grand every four months. How much money is that in a year? That's 80 G's. And that's one every four months. So when you're seeing all these rocks, don't get discouraged. All you have to do is one every four months and you make 80 grand. One every four 60. months. 60, sorry. 20 to 40, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I'm good at math, okay? <laughs> okay, next slide. I see this happen all the time. Check out this slide here. How many guys do you know have come for like eight months straight? Hey, how's things going, man? You know what? I'm looking and looking and looking. I can't find a deal. And then right before they're about to find a deal, they turn around. Don't be that guy. Trust me. If you only, let's say you went all year long and you only found two deals that made you 20 grand. So you went six months apart. That's 40 grand. Don't stop when you're three feet. Yes, don't stop when you're three feet from gold. Next slide. So that's what we're looking for. I'm going to show you some of the deals I did. That was one of my first deals. Keep going. Not bad for the first deal last year. Next one. More digging. Next deal. 
24 G, it's not bad, keep going. That's a cabbage to go in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 17 grand on the next deal. Now, these are months apart, you guys. It's not like every day I'm pulling down a monster deal. These are months apart. Keep going. More digging, another diamond. This one we just are working on right now, last time. So, keep going. Okay. Okay, so here's my last analogy. Anybody wants the biggest loser? Anybody? Nobody wants the biggest loser. Wow, okay. Okay. This is the mistake that sometimes we all make. We, why do we watch the biggest loser? Because we watch that person, click, click it, and we're like, we vicariously live through the person, right? We're like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. That person lost all that weight. And then you go and weigh yourself, you're like, wait, I didn't lose anyway. But it's not like it. Did anybody ever do that? It makes me feel so good to watch the show. Now, sometimes we come to the meetings here, and we hear about other people doing deals, and it's like watching The Biggest Loser. We're like, oh my gosh, Sean, you pulled on that much deal. That's awesome. And you feel good, and you go home, and you're like, wait, I'm not doing any deals. So where does the rubber keep the road? You need to get on the treadmill of real estate, and you need to start moving. And you can't feel good just because I have other people are doing deals around you. You need to get on the treadmill, and you are the biggest loser. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, um, next slide. How many in time? For a couple minutes. Left. Okay. So I I felt guilty of this myself. Okay, for years, for over a decade, I watched this show called Survivor, and I was like, man, that show is so awesome. And every time the guy won the million dollars, I was like, oh, I feel so good. And then I go, I turn off the TV, oh, crap, I'm broke. <laughs> and so finally I was like, you know what? Why don't I apply for the show? And, oh my gosh, I got on the show. After over a decade of watching other people do it, I was so stoked. And so, go, next slide. That's me and Richard Hatch, the guy who first won Survivor. This is like the, one of the most surreal moments of my life. I'm sitting here with Richard Hatch signing autographs for people, and I'm just thinking, wow, what if I just sat and watched other people play the game? And what if I didn't go out and apply? So my point here is that all of this stuff that we're learning here, it's all theory until you go out and do it. And you have to go and do it, no matter how impossible it seems, you can do it. And so, uh, I know that's kind of Anthony Robbins, but uh, next slide here. Okay, so the three things that will determine your success. One more thing. So constant searching for deals. You just have to constantly search for deals. Go ahead. And you have to constantly make offers, like all the time, over and over, and get rejected and find all these rocks. One more thing. And just get answers to your questions from the mentors. So, um, one more time. 30 feet. That's all you need to know. When you get stuck and you don't know the next 30 feet, send me an email. Find a mentor. Find somebody else here. That, and they're all willing to help. So, click one more time. That's my email address. Okay, don't call me like every five minutes, but if you have an emergency, you know, call me. If, if it can wait, send me an email. I'm happy to get that. And find some more mentors. But the answers are all there. And you only need to know the next 30 feet before you get started. And you that's all you need to know is what I'm saying. And, um, and then, oh, yes. And so uh, does anybody have any questions? Five questions. Well, it's fine. My name is Jonas Otsuji. You want my social security number too? Oh. <laughs> it's uh, J O N A S O T S U J I. Is that Otsuji or? Otsushi? No, that's a good joke though. That's a good joke. <laughs> How long were you on Survivor? How many weeks? I was on there for 20 days. And they kicked me out because I was too nice. I was like cooking for everybody. And like, you gotta get rid of Jonas. He's gonna win all the votes. So, I should have been meaner. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Where do you get your money to buy all your deals? Uh, so I borrow money from uh, family and myself, my life savings and family. That's cheaper than hard money. And uh, your parents aren't going to charge you 2 and 12. <laughs> you know? 
I mean, they're just not. They're, you, you I do. Yeah, you're the dude. Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. So yeah, get if you can borrow from friends and family, that's the best source. And then use hard money. Then you can do even more deals. Yes. I'm researching for your first deal, but then get it sold and probably just say it's like copying all my deals. Okay, so my first deal, it had been probably like three months, and Matt Atkinson told me, Jonas, every time you see a for sale by owner sign, I want you to call it. And I just, I, that's what I did. That was my first deal, that duplex that you saw there. I bought it for 140 and we sold for like two fifty nine nine. It was a crazy deal. A lot of work, but that's how I found my first deal. And uh, I didn't have time to go over it, but the majority of the other deals I found through realtors, which if you want to know how I did that, just email me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. All right. Oh, do you not spray stuff that you get on TV? Yeah, that's what you're seeing right here. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe it was just a bad hair day. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.